Welcome to the Roadmap to Secure Love. In today's episode, Kim and Kyle discuss how secure attachment helps you recognize how to set healthy boundaries and when to walk away from unhealthy relationships. Let's dive in. Today, Kim and I want to talk about the ways in which secure attachment, when we have this kind of secure attachment within ourselves, guides us in how we navigate our romantic relationships. And one of the things that's not often talked about is how having that secure attachment allows us to make big judgment calls about the safety and security of a relationship, including knowing when to walk away from a relationship when it's unhealthy and not creating that safety and security we need in our lives. Yeah, and this includes romantic relationships. This includes family members. This includes friendships. When they no longer can give us emotional connection. And we can see that it is affecting our mind and our body and our spirit. And we've tried all the things to repair. Mm -hmm. A secure self says, I'm worth more. Mm -hmm. And I can walk away. I know I deserve better. I know I deserve someone who protects me. I know I deserve someone who has my back. That's not happening. I've made attempts to repair and I've made attempts for this to feel safer for me, but that is not happening. Yeah. And my best move is to walk away from this relationship and armor myself up because I know that there are other people out in the world who will protect me because I know I deserve that. Yeah. And Kyle, you used a word that you used in a previous podcast where you were talking and inviting us to put our armor down, right? Not armor up, but armor down. Mm -hmm. And we're going to armor down when it's safe and we're invested. And we know that both folks are, or whoever it is, are invested into making this relationship feel safe. Mm -hmm. When it's not, it's okay to armor up. And when you've made soft attempts to try to get that repair, you've taken your armor down and tried a little bit to create that safety and it doesn't work and you get dismissive messages or you get messages that don't leave you feeling safe or feeling like there's any protection in the relationship bond. That is where you do have to protect yourself because it is not emotionally safe. And that is normal, healthy, and adaptive to that relationship context and environment which is why we kind of have attachment theory in the first place. We are adapted to the relationship environment in which we're in. And we have all these strategies and survival instincts to keep us safe if we're not getting that safety within the relationship environment. Absolutely. And let's talk about how hard that is. I mean, we just talk about like, yeah, you know, leave a friendship. Um, Tell your family members that, you know, this isn't working. Mm -hmm. leave a romantic partnership Mm -hmm. this is hard it's really hard even for individuals with secure attachment or secure attachment within themselves they still might have those thoughts of am i doing the right thing have i done everything possible have i given everything given everyone the benefit of the doubt and really try to work on this um those still might be there they're often able to answer those questions where they will say, yeah, I have tried this. I have tried this. That didn't work. I'm seeing more that this is a pattern. I'm seeing more that this person kind of is stuck with whatever is going on for them, that they're kind of blocked from growth right now. And that's not helping me feel safe, even though I've been trying to grow. And I have to make this really hard choice to turn away from this person and in the relationship and not just ghost them, but kind of be, hey, I'm not going to be involved in your life anymore. I'm going to be focusing on other things. It's a really hard choice to walk away from a relationship, even when we know it's not serving us. It's scary. It is scary. It's scary. So a secure self will be like, okay, I deserve something different. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to risk and I'm going to get anxious. And I'm going to sit in that anxiety, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to create a boundary and I'm not going to do this anymore. Mm -hmm. But what happens if I have an anxious 
or an avoidant or even a disorganized self, mm -hmm. that even becomes even harder, it right? Does. Tell me about that, Kyle. Well, with anxious attachment, if we know that attachment style, one of the ways in which we adapted from our attachment environment, that insecure attachment environment, is to have beliefs, a belief about ourselves that we're too much and a belief that there aren't others out there who are available and who are responsive and can create that sense of safety and security because we didn't grow up with that stability. Mm -hmm. And so then even when a relationship is not serving us, when we don't feel safe, even when we talk about that, we, we talk about that with our friends, we talk about that with family, we talk about that with a therapist, it becomes terrifying to make that decision to leave that relationship because there's an adaptive belief of I'm not deserving of this love because it's always been unpredictable. And two, if I leave this person who's not meeting my needs, who's not creating that safety and security with me, they're going to all of a sudden change into this amazing partner with the next person. And the only reason they did it was because I wasn't good enough. Yeah. So I can't let go of this relationship. I can't leave this person because what if, what if, what if, what if? Yeah. There's also this other part for an anxious uh, self is if you've been parentified as a child mm -hmm. and parentified as a child means is that your parents made you older than what you should have been, right? You were taking care of your parents. So putting your needs first and setting a boundary is going to make you feel guilty. Mm -hmm. I'm not worthy of that. Or even to question your reality. Like, well, let me see it their way. Or maybe I, I didn't see it correctly. Or, you know, I shouldn't be this way. Those are all not coming from a secure self. Right. Okay. They're coming from our family of origin who said, act older than what you are and take care of my emotions. I am first over you. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. when there, when there when we do start to see that pattern and see how that even shows up in that same family dynamic, as it likely is. Or even how it shows up in our relationship where we are over functioning for our partners and feel like we're holding more of the relationship than what is fair, it becomes really hard to walk away from that or in that relationship if change is not happening because of that guilt of, well, I must be doing this wrong. I must be, I'm supposed to care for this other person and I got to put their needs first, but here I'm going to try to put my needs first. That doesn't feel normal. Yeah. That doesn't feel right because we grew up in an environment where our feelings and needs were put second. Yeah. And so when we do take that stance to do a change, it's not going to feel like, oh, yay, I'm so secure. Life is so great. I'm going to choose myself. Hurrah. It's going to feel really yucky. And we're going to have all this doubt and all these questions about our self-worth what we deserve, and if we're doing the right thing. Mm -hmm. And if we're good people. We're a good person. Right. So we often think about ourselves of like, we need to be doing this differently. We need to try this. We need to try that. Because again, we were the peacemaker right. of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the other things you'll also see with an anxious partner. They will try and 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 try to make things different. Sometimes that trying is trying to get the partner to change, trying to get the partner to be different, which you want to talk about in a previous podcast. But there is all this effort in trying to get the change we need to create safety and security, sometimes for decades. Yeah. Now, let's say I have an avoidant tendency. How's that going to show up as I start to be in unhealthy relationships that I need to kind of break free from? 
I mean, it could, it could show up in a few different ways. It could show up in pointing out kind of our partner's flaws and um, also kind of this point, I don't want to deal with conflict, but it also really touches this deeper place of feeling like we're not enough. Mm -hmm. We're not adequate. I can't do this relationship right. I can't do this correctly. And so that makes it really hard where we are trying to do a lot of things to make the relationship better, have peace, have calmness, but it doesn't go very well. Yeah. And so we will then try again, we'll avoid, we'll distance, and then we'll kind of shove away how we feel about it because that wasn't ever connected with, that was often dismissed, right? They call one type of avoidant attachment dismissive avoidant because we grew up in an environment where our feelings and our needs were dismissed. Mm -hmm. And so we might try to stay in a relationship where we are feeling that familiarity of our feelings and needs being dismissed because that feels familiar and normal. Yeah. Yeah. When I think about somebody who's avoided, I think of somebody who says to themselves in relationships, friendships, romantic relationships, family relationships, um, my needs don't matter. I'm just going to put up with this. Mm -hmm. There's nothing better. I'm just going to kind of get small. Mm -hmm. This is just the way it is. And all of a sudden, my needs are very, 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 very tiny. Mm -hmm. And I not caring for myself. I'm not thinking about what I need. I'm not putting it on the table. I'm just kind of saying, okay, this is all I'm worthy of. This is the status quo. Mm -hmm. So let me just stay with that. Let me accept this because that's how it is. I have to accept that this is what it is. Yeah. So I'm just going to kind of like get smaller. I'm not going to talk about my feelings. I'm going to roll my eyes and be like, okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. But really what I'm saying is, is like nothing can change for me. I'm not worthy of change to happen here. Yeah. And the fact is, is you are secure person will be able to say my gut is telling me something is off and I deserve something better mm -hmm. and I'm scared and I even feel guilty sometimes about doing that mm -hmm. but I'm going to sit in that anxiety and do it because mm -hmm. I know that the way that I'm treated is not right mm -hmm. here's something that you just said that I think is really important avoidant and anxious attachment individuals but also have those gut feelings but they grew up in an environment that made them distrust that gut. Yes. That's why it's an insecure attachment. There's not a security within ourselves of trusting our own judgment, trusting our own feelings, trusting our own needs, trusting our own perspective. That's what disorganized as well. Mm -hmm. Disorganized is so chaotic inside our guts. Wait, is that what I'm really feeling? Is that not what I'm feeling? You gaslight yourself. You let other people gaslight yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, you take... You allow people to be passive aggressive to you. You might be passive aggressive in dealing with conflict. Mm -hmm. You know, we, you know, depending on how we were raised, we stop trusting our gut. And it's like, is that really what I'm feeling? Or is this not? Or is this right? Or is this wrong? Mm -hmm. We question and yeah. And secure attachment is sitting with, and that could be with a therapist mm -hmm. and really think about what does Kim need? She is worthy. Mm -hmm. And is Kim showing up the best that she can for the relationship? Mm -hmm. And if I am, and I'm not getting something back, why am I staying? Right. I think what you're also saying, but that's also really important, is there's a sitting with the emotions and letting those emotions help us understand what's going on for our experience. Whereas 
what we also know is insecure attachment has a really tough time staying in their body in those feelings because they didn't have a lot of those experiences and they go to their head and they analyze, they doubt, they question to try to see again, because they didn't have that trust of their gut to just to kind of evaluate if what they're feeling is even accurate in the first place. Whereas a secure individual will go, Oh, there is something I'm feeling. What is this telling me? And they'll listen and connect with that feeling in their body. Whereas insecure attachment will often go to their head to kind of go, well, what am I feeling? Why am I feeling this? Is that even fair? Is it even accurate? Is that even, and they, they start to do the gaslighting and the questioning, the doubting that makes it even harder to have that clarity. Or if they become passive aggressive, mm -hmm. they have these feelings and instead of thinking through it, they just feel it, but they feel like they can't say it. So they just kind of do a dig, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and it's so sly. You're like, are you really trying to dig at me? Are you not trying to dig at me? Did you post that picture on Facebook to hurt me? Did you not? I'm not sure. You know, it becomes really, really tricky to untangle. But when we are secure within ourselves, we say, am I showing up in relationship authentically? Am I showing up as my best self? If not, I'm going to change that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to invite people to show up for me in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And if they don't and they can't, then I need to start thinking about why am I staying? Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to ghost you, right? If I want to leave the relationship, I want to say to my friends, hey, you know, I spend a lot of time with you and my best selves aren't coming forward. Mm -hmm. It's not working. So I think I'm going to take a break. And I know that's painful, but this isn't working out for me. I heard a quote that said, you know, be around people that bring out the very best in you, mm -hmm. not the protective parts of you. Mm -hmm. If you're constantly being around somebody where you're walking on eggshells, you're feeling like you have to fight. You're feeling like you have to defend. And when you sit down and you talk about it and you've gone to therapy and you've done all the things and you've, you know, invited and invited and invited and it does not change. Mm -hmm. It is okay to say goodbye to that. That is a good boundary. Yep. And this is kind of what you're also naming for people with insecure attachment. It's kind of that same guideline. Mm -hmm. Question, am I bringing my best self this relationship? Am I engaging with what's going on for me? What I feel, what I need? Am I bringing that to the relationship? Am I making space for what my partner feels and needs? And are we able to collaboratively work on this? Mm -hmm. And if not, and there are ways in which I'm not feeling emotionally safe, then my best move is to armor up, put up that boundary, and walk away from that relationship. Which is still honoring being your best self. Yeah. It is honoring being, saying goodbye to unhealthy relationships is being my best self. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Saying goodbye to stuff is being my best self. I think this is what is so hard for so many people to connect with because there's kind of this judgment or cultural narrative of, you just did more. You tried harder. It could work out. Yeah. And I think there has to be points where we go, I have done my best. And <clears throat> yeah, maybe I could spend another two years doing this. But even bringing my best self for the past year, past three months, past six months, has not created any change or any sense of safety it is best of me to walk away from this relationship. Yeah. So a secure self brings their best self forward mm -hmm. 
fights for relationships, mm -hmm. but also knows when to let them go. Right. They fight for the connection. And if that connection is not co-created, they then protect themselves and walk away from that relationship in search of a safer connection elsewhere. Boundaries, baby. That's a wrap for today's episode. Here are the key takeaways. Secure attachment guides decisions by one, bringing our best selves to the relationship. Two, setting clear boundaries to foster emotional safety. And three, being willing to walk away if emotional safety is not created. Remember, your secure self knows when it's time to move on. Until then, stay connected and keep listening with love.